Hi everyone, I'm Ganesh Sishtu, Computer Vision Expert from Valio, Ireland. Today I'm going to talk about Fisher Camera Based Visual Perception in Automated Driving. For the next couple of minutes, here are the main topics I'm going to focus on. A brief overview of autonomous driving and visual perception, followed by Fisher Cameras and their applications in perception, and how we are using deep learning for these applications. A quick glimpse on our upcoming public dataset called Woodscape. Finally, I'll conclude by recapping some of the highlights from these sections. Sensing, perception and localization, scene understanding, planning and control can be considered as the five pillars of autonomous driving. Perception being the most complex and computationally expensive one. We will focus mostly on sensing and perception in this talk. Though there is a huge debate on what sensors are needed and not needed for autonomous driving applications, univocally cameras are considered as the most essential sensors for any autonomous vehicle. Perception can be perfectly described as a combination of recognition, reconstruction and relocalization. Recognition is knowing what is around the vehicle and involves tasks like detection, segmentation and lens soiling detection. Reconstruction consists of depth estimation, motion estimation to know where are the objects in the world. Relocalization is knowing where the ego vehicle is in the world. This involves pose estimation and slap. Other than this, perception also involves lesser known tasks like trailer angle estimation, measuring the sun glare on the lens, etc. Fisher cameras make use of non-linear mapping to generate large field of view. With just four cameras, we can achieve a dense 360 degrees near field perception, making them suitable for applications like automated parking, low speed maneuvering and emergency braking. Commercial Fisher cameras usually have a 190 degrees field of view, available from 2 megapixel to 20 megapixel resolution. But this advantage comes at the cost of non-linear distortions in the image. Objects at different angles look quite different, making the learning process for machine learning algorithms much more difficult. A common practice is to correct these distortions by a fourth order polynomial model or unified camera model or enhanced unified camera model. The fact is there is no ideal projection or correction. These correction techniques are application driven and every correction technique has its own disadvantages. For example, rectilinear correction suffers from loss of field of view and resampling issues. Piecewise linear width affects at the transition areas and also large bleeding in the image. Cylindrical as, as a quasi-linear correction offers a practical trade-off. Correction has disadvantages like loss of field of view, sampling issues, extra computational resources because your pipeline might have different algorithms demanding different view projections. Though lookup tables make this correction process accelerated, LUTs rely on online calibration, so we have to regenerate them every time there is a change in online calibration. In spite of these disadvantages, we go for correction because it offers cross-camera view normalization. This normalization allows us to deploy a single network across different surround view systems with multiple cameras. Utilize low-power hardware accelerators with limited support as geometrical knowledge need not to be encoded. Using deformable convolutions, we can learn the geometric and implicit object deformations in image space itself. Or we can use map convolutions to decouple the sampling and convolution operations, allowing the sampling to be a task-specific or domain-specific mapping function. We tested deformable convolutions as it is purely data driven and our data set consists of data captured from different car lines with quite a different set of extrinsics and intrinsics. In restricted deformable convolutions, others shown that there is around 10% performance improvement on distorted cityscapes. On our data set with standard deformable models, we have seen around 6% improvement in performance. Here is a sim sample demo of semantic segmentation trained on 7000 emails using deformable convolutions.
In case of semantic segmentation, we can make use of class activation maps to understand what our network is learning. In this slide, we can see that though parking lots went through some geometric transformations, our segmentation network is still able to localize them pretty well. In case of Fisher object detection, bounding box representation is not an efficient representation, especially for automotive safety applications where exact position of the object is quite important. In figure B, vehicles are near the center region of the image and hence the lower part of the bounding boxes are representing the object's intersection with the road quite well. But in figure A, standard bounding boxes in yellow color are not good enough to represent the object road intersection. A common idea is to orient the boxes as shown in red color in figure A. In case of gentlemen on the left side of the image, this orientation concept works as the box with optimal orientation is also the box with optimal IOU with the ground truth. But in case of gentlemen in the black suit, the optimal orientation box is not the box with optimal IOU. So simple orientation works in some cases, but it does not solve the problem. 3D boxes works, both annotating and inferring a 3D box in a, is a noisy process for small objects. A full-fledged solution to this problem is instant segmentation. And thankfully, we are seeing single-stage instant segmentation techniques getting popular nowadays. Another important concept for object detection on fisheye is understanding receptive field in fisheye emails. In this slide, a 1D CNN with two convolution layers, one nonlinearity layer, one max pooling layer is presented. At the first convolution layer, the receptive field is 3 pixels. At the second convolution layer, the receptive field is increased to 7 pixels. After the max pooling, further increased to 9 pixels. Here, the receptive field is constant across the 1D signal. Similarly, in case of a regular image, receptive field is same across the image with respect to a layer. But in case of Fisher image, the receptive field changes as we move away from the center of the image. Hence, breaking the translation invariance in CNN. As a result of this, the same object with different translations may not get detected in Fish image. Here, I'm going to present our self-supervised monocular depth estimation work. Instead of using two images, we use three images for robustness during the training phase. First, images at time t-1 and t are passed through a distance prediction network individually. Pairs of images are passed through a pose estimation network to estimate the transformation between the consecutive frames. This transformation matrix is not to the absolute scale. We use vehicle odometry to get the absolute scale. Once we have the scale aware transformation, we can project the distance point at time t minus 1 to time t and then to image coordinates at time t and compute the reprojection loss. Assuming no moving objects and apipolar constraints are satisfied, we should be able to minimize this loss for optimal distance estimation. The same process is repeated between different pairs of the emails in forward and reverse directions for temporal consistency. We used deformable convolution layers, super resolution layers, pixel shuffling, smoothness constraints, structural similarity losses to reach state-of-the-art performance. In case of Fisher images, we used fourth order polynomial model, forward and inverse projections to project the pixels to camera coordinates back to pixel coordinates. We also experimented with unified camera models and enhanced unified camera models. Using deep learning, we are able to solve many problems associated with traditional motion stereo like varying road surfaces, depth of moving objects or moving objects with smooth surfaces. But low light still remains as a challenge. For example, you can see some ghost depths in figure B. If you are working on depth estimation, be careful with static frames, inconsistent baseline, large moving vehicles, rainy conditions, and lack of geographical diversity in your dataset. Here is a sample output of our network on raw fisheye data. For motion segmentation, we have tried two approaches. 
One is a deep learning based network that makes use of deep formal convolutions. Another one is a classical approach. In case of CNN based model, we trained the network in a supervised fashion on 7K images. In case of classical approach, we converted the optical flow to spherical coordinates and applied moving object geometric constraints like planar epipolar constraint, positive depth and positive height constraints to filter the moving object pixels. At present, we are working on incorporating these constraints into loss functions for CNNs. As said earlier, surround cameras are used in safety critical applications like emergency braking and automated parking. But these camera systems are continuously exposed to harsh environmental conditions. Hence, recognizing any artifacts on the lens is very important. Manual annotation of artifacts like mud, raindrops and moist on the lens is quite subject to and susceptible to errors. But generating realistic looking soiling patterns is also a challenge. To address this, we introduced a novel architecture based on variation autoencoders and cycle GANs. While cycle GAN learns image to image translation, VAs control the structure of the soiling patterns and generate masking areas to operate the cycle gun. Here are the few realistic looking soiling patterns generated by our network. Recently, multitask learning has become a common paradigm in autonomous driving. This is due to efficient hardware utilization, reduced parameterization and generalization with limited data. As an example, a network with shared encoder for two tasks is shown in this slide. As encoder is the computationally heavy unit, sharing the encoder can save up to 50% of the computational complexity, while keeping the similar performance levels by making use of inductive bias. A simple example with ResNet 10 encoder, FCN8 and YOLO decoders is presented for understanding the parameter direction. We have also explored various architectures for multitask learning from single shared encoder to multi-stream multi encoders and auxiliary decoders. In fact, some of the figures shown here are abstract representation of state-of-the-art algorithms like mask RCNN, FlowNet, and DeepVivo. Training an MTL model is a tricky part. By the time network learns complex tasks, it might unlearn the simple tasks, making learning an impossible process. A way to handle this is via task weighting. In our recent work, we have proposed a meta-asynchronous backpropagation approach for efficient multitask learning. This technique is found to be scalable to even five or more tasks. With all this practical knowledge, we have built a six-task network for fisheye surround view systems. At present, the system makes use of a projection similar to cylindrical to keep the cross-camera view normalization, allowing us to deploy a single network at large scale. Our network is trained on a large-scale data that is diverse in geographical and weather conditions, covering different use cases like highway driving, city driving and parking. To enable the research community to take the progress one step further, we are open sourcing a major chunk of our data as a public dataset called Woodscape. Woodscape encourages development of native fisheye models instead of applying standard models on undistorted fisheye images. In case of deep learning algorithms, Woodscape can help to understand whether distortions can be learned or how to be modeled explicitly. Let's recap some of the important points we have seen so far. So CNNs are extremely effective and work out of the box. Geometric knowledge needs to be infused to make them work on fisheye images. Data-driven strategies like deformable convolutions work, but there is a strong need for methods that are fisheye-centric. Bounding box representation on fisheye is not efficient for automotive applications. Monocular depth estimation performance is enhanced via inducing fisheye distortion models for reproduction. CNN based fisheye multi camera reconstruction is still a challenge as we need to address the cross camera view normalization. 
Woodscape will be the first public data set for all major tasks in fisheye visual perception. Special thanks to these people for their excellent support in preparing this talk. Thank you everyone.